I had like a, an orgasm. <laughs> like, it wasn't like a, it wasn't a sexual work. I don't know how to explain it, but like this like burst of energy like exploded out of me and I felt like my soul was here and my body was still here. And, um, and that was pretty much my experience. You know, some coworkers go to happy hour at Chili's. I think mine have full body <laughs> orgasms. All right, we're here. Yes, it's week three, episode week three. three. I can't wait until next year and we're like, episode 55 or whatever mm-hmm, it is. It's mm-hmm. so exciting. Count Welcome back to Goddess Hangs. I'm Sadie. I'm Juliet. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's going on with you this week? Let's just do a little recap since we last saw each other. A little recap. Well, we've, you and I have had lots mm-hmm. of texting and conversations yes. and plans surrounding aliens. That's been sort of at the forefront of my mind yes. this past week. Um, I don't know if you want to go into that a little bit, but. Well, a little bit. <laughs> because we're gonna have a full alien episode i feel like yeah and i think what we're doing tonight is going to help fill some of that time yeah yeah <laughs> we're going should we like should we say what we're doing or is it a secret we just we may have brought lots of clothes mm-hmm. to bundle up spend some time outside t- yes looking night. up <laughs> with no particular <laughs> reason in yes. mind and maybe we'll get something out of that yeah so anyways it's been a week of alien excitement mm-hmm. it's been a week of i've been very into propagating my plans oh right <laughs> <laughs> that's been like a big exciting thing this week yeah. um my sweet dad who has been quarantined all year has been on a mission to make the squirrels in the yard befriend him um, and so today they finally, after weeks and weeks of him sitting out there like a statue and like ah! leaving food, <laughs> this was real commitment. He's sitting out there like a statue. You need a time lapse. Record him. I do. <laughs> I do. They're coming. They're like sniffing his feet. They're eating the food. And then he noticed that they had a hard time getting into the pool to drink the water. So he brought them a little dish that they drink out of now. And so that's basically all that's new with me this <laughs> Like your dad needs to be a guest on our podcast. Your interest in aliens, me trying to make plants from plants, mm-hmm. and the squirrels becoming increasingly trusting. That's <laughs> more than what's gone on in my week, I feel like. <laughs> what's new with you? I asked you this question as though I knew the answer to mine, and I don't really know. What did I do this week? Um, we've been taking lots of walks. Fun. There's a lot of dolphins. Really? Almost every time we go to the beach, which is every day almost, Aww. there's dolphins. So it's very magical. Oh my God. You get dolphins. I get squirrels. Yes. So I'm going to start standing like a statue in the freezing <laughs> cold water and wait for the dolphins to come up <laughs> to me. <laughs> I need to get. I need to borrow your mermaid tail. I was gonna say I need to get one of those mermaid tails. Oh, you but can you borrow have mine one. anytime. Become one with the dolphins. Yes. It's so cold. Last week, Craig and I did go into the water on one of the sunny. It was like the day was actually sunny and hot, but okay. obviously it's the Pacific Ocean and it's now winter, so it's freezing cold. Um, and it was very resetting and recharging. We were like free cryotherapy. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you did a polar plunge. Yes, it was. We were the whole time we were going in. I'm going to move the mic away, but we were like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> <laughs> people were like laughing at us because we're, you know, oh, it was oh. fun. And then we we didn't bring towels because we kind of just went on a walk and we wore our swimsuits just in case. And then we just laid in like the actual sand and got all sandy. And it was very like earthing to do that too that's beautiful that was a lovely experience that was last week though what did i do this week (laughs) Hmm. i don't know yeah that's okay if anything pops in just interrupt at any time i know i remember something i did i yeah i've just been trying to work more be like i had you know that period of being uninspired and now mm-hmm. i'm like more in work mode so that's been nice to be inspired again yeah so i've been like doing a lot of like 
content creating and you hosted a dance party a virtual dance party i did that was so fun i'm gonna do that every friday oh my gosh yeah i will i will attend yeah i'm gonna i don't know like i don't want to i want people to not feel like they have to be like challenged to do it you know like i tagged you and challenged mm-hmm. you i want everyone to just do it so me i don't know if i should i should not tag people or if i should just tag new people it reminds me of the beginning of of the lockdown when i think every other day somebody was like 10 push-ups and i said no i remember someone (laughs) tagged me in the 10 push-ups and i recorded myself doing like one and then falling on the ground and i was like shove your challenge up here you know (laughs) what (laughs) i was like i'm i'm not doing that but thank you thank thank you you. for thinking that i could do thank you for reminding me that i can't do (laughs) push-ups So basically, it's been a crazy week it's for us. It's been crazy around here. Um, you know, week to yeah, recover from yeah. dolphins and squirrels and <laughs> the wild lives we live. I love it, though. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, we have an idea for what we want to talk about today. Yes, it's fun. It's fun. It's very fun. Isn't it fun to talk like this? What? What is this? It's like from, Sadie's like putting her little hands together, kind of like, like a squirrel. Laugh. Oh, <laughs> like a mwahaha, but like this. <laughs> I love it. Um, that is a reference that is from Arrested Development, Lucille Bluth, and they're calling Tobias like Nancy or something, and like it's, it's a mean joke, but, but Arrested Development is like that. And she goes, "Isn't it fun to talk like this?" And she does that. <laughs> Anyways. I, yeah. Okay, go on. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I've started that show, I think, six different times, and I always love it. And then I always just fall off for some reason, but I yeah. love it. So It's my all time favorite show. It's gotten me through every dark day. Like, cool. I've rewatched every season hundreds of times, probably. So, it's got a special place in my heart. <laughs> Thank you, Arrested Development. If you're going through a hard time, I suggest watching and rewatching Arrested Development over and over mm-hmm. again. Also, Boy Meets World. That's been my show. I have every season on DVD. I do too. <laughs> well, I guess one of us can sell our copies because we've got one between the two. <laughs> and and just to put that into perspective, the only DVDs I own, mm-hmm. honestly, are all the seasons of Boy Meets World and all the seasons of Newlyweds Nick and Jessica. Do you remember that show with Jessica Simpson? Oh <laughs> my god. Other than that, not a single movie. <laughs> it's funny because I I love collecting DVDs and I get made fun of for it when like new people will, like see my collection or whatever, but my collection is all like very like sci-fi um mm-hmm. you know harry potter and lord of the rings and then there's like the matrix collection and the blade collection and like it's all like action <laughs> movies or whatever and then there's every episode of boy meets world <laughs> <laughs> people are like oh well you gotta lay a foundation of love and family and yes. then you can and build you everything up to that. the vampire slayer who is half vampire himself <laughs> yes so, so one day we'll like switch off between that and a little like Nick and Jessica at Christmas time. Love that. And then Jessica in the recording studio. That's where the famous, you know, Fisher. Yeah, chicken? Is this fish. It says fish of or it says chicken of the sea. Is it chicken or is it fish? Isn't that from uh-huh. that show? That was like Iconic. the first scene in episode one. That I like how cool. I know at at the two minute mark. <laughs> <laughs> That show's gotten me through some hard times oh, as well. What's Nick Lachey up to now? He's oh, married. He hosting something that I watched. Oh, 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 oh. A Love show. is Blind? Yeah, because it was, yes, Love is Blind. I just spit into the mic. So sorry if you heard that. Because remember, <laughs> I was telling you, I think I convinced you to watch it, right? Yeah, uh-huh. I like binged it. And then, <laughs> but he's like. I'm Nick Lachey, and this is my wife. Like, he, like, totally downplayed, like... <laughs> no, this is what he did. What did he do? It was so weird what he she said. said. She said, I'm Vanessa Lachey, and he goes, and I'm obviously Nick Oh, yeah. Lachey. <laughs> and, like, if you're over 25, you know who that is, but if you're it's any... Not, if you're <laughs> under 25, he's, he's like, obviously. Love is blind. Who's this man? <laughs> We stand Nick Lachey. I love him. I used I'm to, obviously Nick Lachey. I used to just love him. Can we start in the beginning when we kind of say our names quick and we go, 
I'm obviously Sadie and you say I'm obviously Juliet. <laughs> I love that. That's or no, one of us. I say like I'm Juliet and you go and I'm, I'm obviously, obviously Sadie. <laughs> we'll take turns. Okay. Though. We'll take turns. We'll be like, who's obviously this week? Oh, it's my turn. Okay, okay, okay. Oh my gosh. I'm seeing the the merchandise now. It'll just say obviously, obviously. Sadie. <laughs> obviously Juliet. Obviously goddess hangs, obviously. obviously. And this is obviously goddess hangs. Ooh. Obviously. I love it. We're all sharing You're an inside joke. Like, <laughs> First inside joke. Yay. Actually, I think this is our second because I think the Dark Knight of the Soul is going to become a oh, recurring yeah. that one was, too. That was a deep episode. It we really was. traversed through so many emotions. <laughs> <laughs> now I keep seeing that phrase everywhere. That was synchronistic. Really? Um, I haven't seen it. I, I, I need to start sending it to you. I think I meant to, but I thought I found it from one person. I think mm-hmm. I saw it once and then it stuck with me. But then now I'm seeing like all different, these different accounts saying it. So it's just okay. a thing, I guess. It's very dramatic. Yes, please tag me to the point where you think you might be annoying me. I'm never annoyed by being tagged on Instagram. Like, I think my my old one of my oldest friends, Carly, and I, who've been friends for almost 20 years, I think we send each other probably 30 things a day. <laughs> And we're just so past the point of like, should I? It's like, there's no filter. I know. Yeah. And the same, that's like, that's, I think that's how we stay friends with like the, the long distance friends Mm -hmm. and like our oldest friends. It's like, you don't really like catch up with each other daily, but you send each other memes and it's a special way to connect. I love it. (laughs) Obviously. Obviously. So anyways, obviously. (laughs) Now that we've got We need to talk about some woo-woo shit (laughs) yeah that's why we're all here anyways so let's first chat about when we had our first and yet another thing we did together Mm -hmm. parallel first time synchronistic um breathwork class that Mm -hmm. was crazy which um the b crystal clear is where we went to breathwork which sadly i think has closed since the pandemic but their beautiful like meditation studio run by sugar sugar and she like commented on one of my posts the other day after i had told my friends this breathwork story and i was like and here we are you brought it up and i didn't bring it up so everything's just you know it's crazy aligning be crystal clear is one of those places that i went to one time for 90 minutes Mm -hmm. and i feel like i have memories that i was there every week for five years do you know what i'm talking about i was like oh my god they're gonna close like no as if can you imagine going to a restaurant one time and being like they're closing (laughs) you'd be like what was it called but yeah we had we plan we we went there there. once and it was shortly before everything closed down and we had plans to make it like a monthly girls thing so we were we had to grieve the fantasy of yeah. going there monthly yeah but we went there just in time we did i think yeah. we went honestly wasn't it like the first week of march yeah it was before the people were starting to wear masks and stuff because there was no concern about that yeah but it was very i think i it remember was like one here, month before maybe like, it wasn't like maybe it was, it was starting February. to i think we were all kind of feeling like we heard it was entering the u.s and we're like it's not getting it's gonna be fine Oh, obviously. And here we are, nine yes. months later. Ooh. So, uh, yeah. ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, whose idea was it? It wasn't mine. It, it was mine. Sadie's idea. Okay. I'm the instigator always. <laughs> like, hey, everyone, you want to go do some stuff? I follow Sadie to do just about anything. <laughs> I'm like, please watch these alien documentaries. I was like, all right. So you can go alien watching. <laughs> Please do breath work. Breath work kind of felt like an alien experience. It did. Now that I say that. So if you're listening and you're going, what are they? What is breath what work? What is breath work? Yeah. Breath work. I wish I had looked up the proper definition, but it's breathing a certain way mm-hmm. and really focusing on your breath. And there's a pattern in which you breathe um, very consistently. And mm-hmm. it allows you to sort of have like out of body experiences yeah um it go almost on. like a psychedelic experience yes like mind body soul oh your i soul, did like comes out of your body i did research on this because after i did it we're gonna sort of tarantino this story yeah. after i did it i said what the hell just happened <laughs> what <laughs> because i had no idea what i was walking into and mm-hmm. i thought i was going to lie on the <laughs> floor know, and just... meditate for an hour and i was like great i'm tired i was like what did i bring everyone to are they gonna be mad at me because <laughs> it was so crazy <laughs> 
And then afterwards I looked it up and basically this, I think there was a person doing experiments with LSD and the government came in and said, you can't do that. And so the guy said, all right, well, Mm -hmm. (laughs) this is my (laughs) completely botched version of what happened. But he said, okay, well, how can I create these psychedelic experiences Mm -hmm. for people without having them ingest anything? And they came up with this. Yeah. And it's so I also learned like we did one type of breath work. There are different there's all sorts of different breath breathing techniques you can use for different things. Okay. But the, so I don't know the name of what you were doing, but it was it was kind of like you were mostly inhaling. It was like <sighs> right? Yeah. It was like in and in the, out all with your mouth and like rapidly, right? It was yeah. pretty bump bump out, bump yeah, bump it was out. Like, <sighs> Like you were almost yeah. So the idea was that you're where you were over oxygenating ourselves, right? That's what they explained. Yes, scientifically, that's what's happening. Yeah. So, and they were like, whatever you do, just try and keep breathing through it. Mm-hmm. And they told us um, some things can happen to your body. So here's some of the things that could happen to your body. So imagine you get into the studio. You're like, yeah, they're I can. Like, here's a pillow. Here's lay a down. pillow. I was also driving here thinking today, how insane this idea would be now to be like i know it's a pandemic but what do you think about getting into a room with 50 people you don't know an enclosed space yeah and and breathing really (laughs) big (laughs) for an hour and also here put this thing on your eyes to relax you that a Mm -hmm. thousand people have used before and And also pillow that everyone has laid on and we're gonna come around and touch you too (laughs) Yeah. You're gonna touch your hands and touch it. Yeah. And at the time it was like, great. And yeah. now it's like, ooh, I don't oh, know if that's I miss, gonna I miss just being so carefree. I about know, that. me too. I can't wait till it's gonna be years, I think, before we feel carefree like that. I know. Again, but... It'll be a minute. Yeah. But we'll make it through. We will. So but, okay, there's some things that can happen like physically to your body. Okay, so you imagine imagine not knowing any of this and you're like, Oh, we're gonna breathe. And I was like, yeah. Great, sounds nice. I I would pay anything to lie down after work so yeah um, <laughs> we get there it's a beautiful room and like sadie just said there's pillows there's crystals, crystals everywhere and, like, sound um bowls mm-hmm. like crystal singing bowls a gong a gong oh yeah you know you pick your little mat you lie down everyone's being so nice to you <laughs> so and I'm like, oh, great. I can't wait to just listen to some bells and... And somebody playing the bowls. And tune and, out, okay? Yeah. They say, all right, so just so you know, what will very likely happen <laughs> is your hands are going to rise up above your head and claw up like lobsters. Mm-hmm. And you're going to kind of look like this. And if you're not <laughs> looking at the video, I'm doing this really Quiet. fun... Like, dino- mine went more like this, like a, like a T-Rex. Like they came okay, in. mine were above my head. <laughs> and again, this is a girl who walked in saying, nothing's going to happen. Also, when they're telling you this, you go, well, that's going to happen to other people. But this is my first time, so I'm probably not going to even be doing it quite right. Yeah. So that's not going to happen to me. I was like, I'll probably take a nap. I- <laughs> and, then, and then they're like... What was the other one? Well, they're like, and you know... If you need, your body can have different responses. You might scream, you might cry, you might laugh. And you're like, what the fuck? (laughs) You're like, what did I just pay to do? I thought I was going to take a freaking nap. So, yeah, they're saying all these things. And I'm at the time, this was before me and Sadie were the, you know, besties we are now. I'm lying in between my two coworkers (laughs) on the floor. Like, What if I start bawling in the fetal position? (laughs) And my boyfriend came with us, yes. too. So he's over. He's on my He was on your right. right. And Juliet was on my left. And then our other coworker was on. Yes. I wanted to be sandwiched by people I knew because yeah. I didn't want a stranger to start flailing yeah. on me. <laughs> so that was very intentional where I placed myself. So y- we get into it. They start mm-hmm. blasting the music. They start blasting. Yeah. So the thing that was good is they they blast music really loud so that when you do have like vocal reactions you're not very self-conscious of it right but so they were um playing lady gaga what is it like bo- um born to be free or the song oh, I don't was remember. super oh i remember it was lady gaga and it was that um I'm on the right track, baby. I was born this oh. way. That song, blasting it. And it's like this like remixed, like very like clubby version. Do you remember this? 
No. Okay, I remember. <laughs> and and so I'll I guess I'll just say what happened to yes. me and then you go into it on you. So so <laughs> you start doing this breathing and the music isn't blasting right away. They kinda like gradually turn it up, I feel like, or that mm-hmm. was my experience, what I remember. Um so then the I mean the music is loud. It's louder than when you're in like a club. Like they blast this and slowly you know i'm like doing this breathing and i'm like kind of my body's kind of freaking out and i'm like trying to just stick with it because your ego goes breathe normal what are you doing and um and so then my hands start rising up and doing the claw so i and i'm trying to just i'm like keep going keep going and i and i start laughing hysterically Mm i am i mean laughing it, it wasn't that something was funny. It's like, it's a it's a very energetic release and usually it's because something's happy and funny. But it wasn't even like a, um, this is the most fun I've ever had in my life or something hilarious is happening. It was like a panicked laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? And I was just, I died laughing. And then I can, I can hear Craig on the other side of me bawling. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He won't care if I share. He shares everything, and he's like, he's like, no. <laughs> he's like, no, no, no. <laughs> he was fine. He had a great experience. I look at him after, but I'm just, I'm laughing. I can hear him cry, <laughs> and I can hear Juliet laughing, and I'm trying to just focus on myself. But I really, I felt like. Um, I don't know how else to explain this, so it's gonna sound kind of inappropriate, but it was it wasn't like an orgasm like in a it wasn't a sexual orgasm, but that sort of build up of energy and it needed to release. Yes. And I was like, ah <laughs> I felt like my soul needed to come out of my body in order for it to release. <laughs> so hot thinking about this. <laughs> it was like my it was like I like uh, like I had like a, an orgasm. <laughs> it, was like, it wasn't like a. It wasn't a sexual work. I don't know how to explain it, but like this like burst of energy like exploded out of me, and I felt like my soul was here and my body was still here, and um and that was pretty much my experience. <laughs> you know, some coworkers go to happy hour at Chili's. <laughs> I think mine have full body <laughs> orgasms. <laughs> Lady drags us to breath work. I shouldn't say drag. We were very excited to go. Yeah. But yeah. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Sadie's to my right and she is oh, laughing God. hysterically. And every... I'm a curious girl. So, <laughs> so um, every, every couple minutes... They want you to keep your eyes closed, but every couple yeah. minutes I would kind of open one eye and just <laughs> look like, over and see what's happening. The same. Um, my experience was, yeah, it's this crazy build, and mm-hmm. I my little lobster claws started coming together and then rising above. <laughs> And you cannot open uh-uh. your hands. We were stuck like that for quite a while after it was done. <laughs> we looked like a small mouse, like, asking for a piece of cheese. Like, we could not open our hands. No. And I was trying, and I was like, do it, yeah, do it. Like, and I couldn't open them. It was just It wasn't. So, it was physical. <laughs> and um, what happened to me was I was, I think, laughing a lot because you were laughing a lot. And because I was, like, so hysterical, like, how could this possibly be happening? Right. And then I definitely... I didn't cry. I screamed so much. I remember you screaming. I was like, <laughs> I was just, and I thought, looking back, I told my boyfriend about it, who, you guys, if you've listened, um, Sadie's boyfriend, Craig, goes with to breath work. Mine goes, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to hang back. <laughs> I'm going to uh, maybe do anything else. And so, um, <laughs> anything really <laughs> uh, but i told him what happened and i said you know you might actually like it i would be i would and then there was a woman a few rows back that i don't know what was happening to her i think people were having their their different i don't think um our other co-worker made much noise i don't remember i don't her remember making. and she was one over for me so <laughs> but there was one woman a few rows back and you would have thought that that somebody was like ripping out her spleen like through her skin it was like ah! she was <laughs> really having a, a, a release so g- good for her yeah. um but i 
there was one thing that happened that I thought was there were two things that happened that I thought were pretty amazing. The mm-hmm. first was I did not I had no idea that by breathing a certain way you could completely change the state of your body. Mm-hmm. You could release so much energy. Yeah. That was incredible. And then what happened was so they had said we're going to go around and if we feel like you need support, we'll like grab onto your legs or we'll grab onto mm-hmm. your arms. It can be kind of grounding if you're like freaking out. Yeah, just to yeah. remind you like look, you're not dying, you're fine. And at one point I had the little mask over my eyes and my eyes were closed and I was really like hitting this this really intense screaming point or whatever and I felt two hands come over and hold my legs down and it was so I was like oh thank god somebody came over Mm. because I was so flipped out and experiencing so much and I felt so like safe Mm -hmm. and I felt the hands there for a long time. And finally, I thought, wow, who's who's sitting with me this long? This is amazing. So I, you, you know, peaked. opened my... There was nobody there. There was never anyone there. Oh, my God. And I thought, wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's what I have to say about breath work. Wow. Yeah. And then did you <clears throat> have any, like, interesting dreams or anything... Um, come up for you like after breathwork because I know they kind of told us they're like you might not sleep well tonight or you might sleep really well you might have vivid dreams you might have things come up later you might have another release like did anything did you feel anything after you know I don't remember if if there was a thing or a breakthrough Mm -hmm. but if this was weeks before COVID, mm-hmm. think about all the ways our lives change. I know. R- honestly, within weeks of doing this. That's what I always say. I'm like, that triggered so much for me, I think. It was like the next step. I have some recordings of breathwork classes that I've gotten through courses that come along with it, but I'm afraid to do that. Oh, I did one alone. at home. You did? Was it, it okay for you? I, um, it wouldn't be the same. But It was not the same. I was able to feel like the like I had baby claws, mm-hmm. but I think I was afraid to go all out because I was like, God forbid somebody walks in and is like, I'm are like you screaming. having a seizure? Yeah. So I, I didn't let myself I think go all out. Yeah. I need to just blast the music one day and just do it. Mm-hmm. I've had resistance to doing it by myself, but I, I mean, I could have Craig do it with me too. Cause totally. Totally. But um, no, 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 no. And then I was like, I was like, babe, like, what were you thinking about? What were you re- what were you releasing? And he was like, I have no idea. <laughs> he doesn't remember. But Do you, did you have a dream or a vision? or I, something? So I yeah, it was really interesting that night. I dreamed about Larimar, which is the ring I have for my mom. Oh, I remember you saying that. And I had a dream about a really specific piece. And it was like as though I was like on the piece like walking like i don't know how to explain i like walking Ooh. on it but just like really close to it whatever and then i found the piece at work and i bought it so i have the piece of larimar that i saw in my dream and then, oh i want to see it after yeah so <laughs> and I, you know, I, 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 since i was the the display person mm-hmm. i had seen and touched every crystal in the store so I, my mind had definitely seen it before mm. um but, you know, I had never thought about it before. And then my mind recalled the exact piece and, like, with my body or, you know, spirit or whatever. It was like, this is the one you need. So I sleep with it next to my bed every night. I'm like, oh Yeah. And Larry Mar is just special. a name? No, I've never named it, surprisingly, since I named most of my crystals. I know. That's why I asked. <laughs> Does it have a small chair? <laughs> it should. It has a special spot on my bedside. I used to sleep with it in my pillowcase. Because I just felt like, I don't know, it's like such, Larimar's like really like goddess like energy. Sp- goddess hang, sponsored by Larimar. Sponsored by Larimar. We'd like to um, thank Larimar. It, it's very feminine energy and calming and peaceful. It's pale blue. It's this, I don't know if you can see it from this far away, but um, this was my mom's ring. So Larimar is just special to me. So that was cool. And that was just my little thing I got out of afterwards. And then, yeah, I feel like it just kind of dominoed and flicked the first domino <laughs> <laughs> the, to all all of this it did thanks breath work thank thanks, you sugar. breath work thank you be crystal clear thank yeah. you sugar so that was one um you know how some i remember hearing stories like i had an, an old um 
well, she wasn't old. I might. I previously <laughs> went to a particular hairdresser, and she would talk about like, oh, in the eighties, like my friends would drag me to this nightclub and that nightclub, and they would mm-hmm. drag me to Vegas. And I, <laughs> I've never quite had those experiences. Mine are like, oh yeah, like I followed Sadie to breathwork <laughs> and um, into abundance and manifesting, <laughs> and it's been a great been a great journey oh this is such a side note but i've been wanting to tell you and i thought it might be funny to tell you on air um i remembered there have been so many signs throughout my life that Mm -hmm. i have like intuitive psychic abilities that i just never oh yeah so one of them was when i was in high school i would play this game called like if there was nothing to do in class i'd be like let me guess what your room looks like and then I I would describe what their room was and where things were placed and the colors on the walls. And they were like, that's crazy, Juliet. And I said, ha, ha, ha. And then the bell would ring. And I <laughs> never thought like, oh, maybe I have a gift. <laughs> I just thought oh, I'm just You're like really good at guessing, looking at a person and thinking, well, well yeah. that's all it is. Um, so I meant to tell you that. That's so funny i never really did you didn't like play that. guess what your room looks like no i just i just kept everything in my head like we talked about like i would just make up like, these very specific stories about people and like i remember telling like my mom a few times and they weren't like extraordinary stories they were boring regular person stories mm-hmm. otherwise i would say oh that's just a little kid coming up with people that are princesses and whatever they were just like you know I don't like that guy's vibe or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or I would say that lady um, did this and this and this. And she'd be like, why are you, why are you saying that? That's weird. (laughs) Don't make things up like that. We're not, she didn't really discourage me, but she didn't realize that I was probably just reading a person. You know, it was, it's the old American pastime. Yeah. (laughs) I can't wait to have a kid and just, um, cause I think all kids say crazy shit like that. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, oh, and w- one time when I, <laughs> I remember my one of my good friends um, had a baby brother when we were in high school. So we remember everything about this baby brother. But he would tell us stories. He'd be like, one time when I was a girl and I got run over by a car and we were like, oh, that's so scary. <laughs> but <laughs> I can't wait to have a kid and then tell me stuff. And I'll be like, really? Tell me more. Right. Let me you write that down. your past life. Good job. <laughs> Um, on the on the topic of past lives, do you want to oh, talk yeah. about it? Kind of segued in really beautifully. <laughs> this, yes, I was like, what was the other thing you were going to talk about? So we thought today we would get into breath work, which is amazing. And I don't, I would Google to make sure there aren't any like warnings. I don't know if a person yeah. has like a lung condition or a certain, I don't know. There's probably, look into it. Our experience was very intense. And as I already voiced, I, I'm nervous to do it on my own. So just, I'm sure there's YouTube videos and stuff to do them a little more lower key, but be aware it can be very intense. You and grandma over the holidays. Yeah. Just pop on a breath work video. There and you go. <laughs> make sure her, imagine her like a pacemaker tape, is, like. <laughs> <laughs> is charged. And, oh my go. gosh. So the other thing that we did tying back to synchronicity and i don't think we knew we signed up at the same time no, we, another over thing and over and over again we sign up for the same things and we don't talk about them we have um a wonderful friend named tiffany who sort of came into her magic this year mm-hmm. and her purpose and is doing what is quantum healing hypnosis i don't know if it yeah i never it's q h h t and it's quantum healing hypnosis technique or it's quantum hypnosis healing technique i don't know which order the eight two h words are in so we're just gonna call it cute cute it's q-h-h-t a cute practice um, it's a cute and <laughs> tiffany is amazing and we will put her instagram mm-hmm. in the description she's at higher higher self higher guidance self dot guidance oh yeah there's a dot in there yeah and maybe we'll have her on sometime we definitely should she'd, she'd be very she fun well okay q h h t a lot of people that see their past lives, they, they see old experiences with aliens. And the, create, the creator of QHHT has been a huge part of, like, talking about alien stuff and how they Dolores? Exist. Dolores Cannon. And so we need to have her on to talk about aliens, I feel like. <laughs> we're just gonna going with it. We're steering the entire show to aliens. I love it. <laughs> She's going to come. We'll do it. We'll have her on for like a, a segment on the alien episode that we were very clearly need to do. I think that might even be like a next week. Yeah. 
yeah we need we have we need a whole panel because our other <laughs> friend has well we have to see if she's willing to talk about her alien experiences but we just need to that's gonna be like a two-hour episode <laughs> oh my gosh you guys are just gonna have to cozy up yeah. and uh or we look can up make at it the into stars two parts, but we'll maybe record Ooh, a two, two hours part? in a row but we'll have Se- season finale no the season's not over yeah <laughs> <laughs> And we're done. <laughs> Thank you. This has been Thank you for tuning five in. full episodes. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Our Anyways. MTV show is in production. Yes. Um, yes. Which I was thinking that today. If this was if 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 MTV was still putting together reality shows, we could be like two developing psychic mediums take LA. <laughs> totally. I that came to my into my head this week. I was like, are we going to get a TV show? I was thinking that we would be very TV showable. We were thinking that this week? I was thinking that this I week. I was thinking that Maybe this we week. We need to talk, talk about our um, limitless potential and find people to reach out to and be like, "Here we are if you want to if you want to hang out with us. We're funny, we're cute." <laughs> and we Obviously. can read people's minds. <laughs> Obviously. Obviously. <laughs> And we can read, and we can I don't talk, talk to your too much, dead but they family. say on a resume, that's when you get to brag. <laughs> we're funny, we're cute, and we can read your mind. <laughs> that's our tagline. I, I don't love know. it. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're not we're cute, and we're cute. Q A T. We're about to talk about cute. <laughs> So in Q H H T, so uh, uh, naturally, Sadie and I obviously booked a session with Tiffany. I think days apart, mm-hmm. unintentionally, and we you go in to the session and you spend the first hour or two, mm-hmm. which goes by very quickly. She said, "Oh, this is a five or six hour thing." I did. She didn't tell me that <laughs> before I went, and I was like, "Okay, bye, babe. Like I'll be gone for like two hours." <laughs> And I was there for like four. I love bringing. And I had an hour drive each way. I love bringing Victor into the conversation because I told him, "Oh, I'm gonna go try this hypnosis thing." I said it might be about six hours. He goes, "Are you kidding me?" <laughs> I said, "No, no, it's fine. Like, <laughs> we'll have dinner after." So I drive. I drive over. Oh yeah, I don't. Who cares that I drive over? So I'm there, and we're <laughs> take us through every step of that day. <laughs> I put on the radio. Um, so we, she gets to know. Oh, this is funny. When so there's a part I, of I the practice. The, okay, she gave me materials to read, so I would know what to expect. And somebody didn't do their homework, and it's me. <laughs> so we're just catching up for a while, and I was like. There's a segment of it that she needs to get to know you really well. Yeah. But we're, we're old friends. She used to work with us. And so I keep asking her the same questions <laughs> back and like and talking about her. And she goes, and she's like, okay, well, we need to focus on you. And I was like, why? <laughs> I thought I would just get there and be hypnotized. But I was like, you know, I just thought we were hanging out. Oh, yeah, my face hurts. Because <laughs> the questions are deep, too. It's like, so your childhood? Like, what? Yeah, you know, I was and then, like, all right. We're like best friends now. And, cool. And Sadie goes, yeah, okay. What about your child? <laughs> and Tiffany's probably looking at the clock like, oh, my God, this is going to go for eight hours. So <laughs> This is a 10-hour session. She kind of spat it along. So she gets to know you. And then you, you lie down and... Um, mm-hmm. I got all cozy with blankets. Mm-hmm. I know she like talks to you. She I know. To me. She's like here. Here's this pillow is more comfortable and like <laughs> yes. <laughs> so she tucks you in. Oh my gosh, she's gonna be like loving that we're talking about her. This yes. whole, like, she'll have to put this whole epi- section of that. We can clip it out for her. So yes. She can put it on her website. <laughs> so tucks you in makes you feel so comfortable even if i didn't know her i'm certain that i would have been like yeah. this woman's not gonna steal from my purse while my <laughs> eyes are closed <laughs> it's all I good feel confident yeah <laughs> so uh <laughs> i feel like she's just like doing her hypnotic voice and as she's like rifling through your things <laughs> <laughs> writing down getting one of those what papers doing. this is a joke great now she copies. can't use this for her website <laughs> you know the thing where you you put the credit card under and you like yeah i'm so you could take a picture of the credit card i'm the thinking old the old way. way so yeah so she gets you all comfortable and she has this beautiful speaking voice that she uses mm-hmm. and you you go into hypnosis with her and it's really beautiful because you connect to your subconscious and mm-hmm. you connect to your past lives and this was the kind of thing where 
I can, I know I can dip into that pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, unlike breathwork where I was like, yeah, right. But then was blown away. I had a feeling that I would have something happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I want you to tell your past life first, because in contrast to mine, okay. it's pretty funny. Okay. So, well, okay. So basically, she takes you on a meditation. <clears throat> and I actually need to listen back to mine again. I haven't listened back because I think I remember everything. But of course, I don't know for sure. I thought we I was under for 10 minutes and it was an hour. So yeah, I'll flew by. But um, so she kind of like takes you up and then you're like on this cloud and then the cloud comes down and what's around you and you're, mm-hmm. you've entered your past life. There's way more before that. You don't simply go on the cloud and come back down. But um, so, and then you just have to really, and yes, again, like we've been practicing tapping into our intuition and kind mm-hmm. of ignoring our ego. So you really have to trust, but obviously um, being under hypnosis helps. But I, I had a thing where I was like, I don't think I'm able to be hypnotized because I've tried it in the past and it didn't okay. work. But it worked. So anyway, so she drops you down on the cloth, the cloud, (laughs) (laughs) and she's like, "Okay, like, what does it look like around you?" And I see like, um, like the like the pyramids, but they're like Mayan or like Aztec, like with like the steps in them. Mm -hmm. So that's where I am. We'll just say Mayan for the rest. I don't keep saying both. So I'm like, okay, like I see these pyramids, um, with the steps in them. And she's like, okay. And she's like, okay, look down. Like, what are you wearing? And and I started laughing. And I was like, um, not very much. I, I kind of am dressed like Pocahontas. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I think I just had on, like, something on my bottom. And I was, like, t- topless. And, and But I was like, but I have lots of jewelry on, which is interesting because I have rings on every finger in this life. And I always have lots of necklaces on and my earrings and whatever. And that's what I saw. I saw, like, um, big, like, um, ornate rings on, like, every finger, like, silver with, like, turquoise and shell and this, like, red stone, like a red turquoise. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I saw that. And she just kind of keeps asking you questions. And she's just very intuitive. She knows what to ask. So then the next question was, like, "Um, are you holding anything? And I was, like, yeah, I have a basket. And she's, like, okay. Um, What's in the basket? And I was, like, a baby. And she was like, oh, <laughs> is it your baby? And I was like, no. <laughs> and I didn't feel like going deeper into that. And she was like, okay. <laughs> and then it turned out, so, you know, she kind of keeps, she's like, okay, like, let's go to where you live and ask you questions about that. And, oh, like, who's who, who else is around you? So I, um, so it turned out the baby was my sister's. So it was my, it was my nephew, it was a little boy. And my sister in that life had passed away during childbirth. So I was going to take care of the baby. So that's why I had a baby that wasn't mine. Um, And my partner was with me and I saw it. And so she kind of goes, okay, let's like, you know, jump to a significant day, a different significant day. So I saw a day where like um, the men were going into like, uh, like a sweat lodge and the woman were staying outside and we were going to just like dance and celebrate. And it was cause my partner was, um, being like promoted into something. It was some sort of like ritual or celebration for him. And by being his partner, I was going to also, I was, there was this dance celebration. I was also going to be hire a uh, hire, like someone for people to come to it. And I remember feeling so nervous and, um, like not confident about that and like oh my god like I have to like play it cool but um but who am I to be the one in the village that people come to (laughs) like this feeling it was really interesting and um and then yeah I I lived my life there I I ended up losing that partner when we were still pretty young so I'm um, sorry yeah and um but my but my nephew slash son um I saw him grow up and um i saw like i had some moments with him and then what was really interesting was that i saw myself on my dying day and i was very old and i was like very ready to go and i was laying in like a bed and i and i was kind of above myself and i could see like the villagers coming in and paying their respects i'm getting so many chills really yeah um and then I and I was holding on just long enough so everyone I was I was per, like I was intentionally holding on to being in my body long enough for everyone to come pay respects to me and then I was like and then I let go and then I like 
came up and um I, I, and I saw myself as like this like orb and all of these orbs rushed to me and they were like it was it was like like everyone was so excited they're like oh like we missed you like it was it's like your soul family because you reincarnate with your same like soul group we probably reincarnated together before for sure um and then so then I so then I was on like the spirit side and they were like okay like go see your spirit guides I was like, okay. And then they were like, okay, this isn't like a judgment day or anything. This is like, let's look at your life and see what went on. And um, what do you want to do in the next life? And it, it was very just like chill. And <laughs> <laughs> like the, um, like, yeah, my experience in the spirit world was like, you go and you get to like rewatch your life. Um, or not even rewatch. Like you're kind of just like, no, like everything that happened in your life and like what you were meant to learn and go through. And then you can be like, all right, so I learned this lesson in this life. I think I'd like to work on this in the next life. And you can, like, pick your lessons. <laughs> and that was kind of it for my um, experience with that. What was interesting is she said, you know, was anyone um, from that life in your life now? And my, my baby, my nephew slash son, is my brother Luke now. Aww. Um and I think my partner in that life was my partner now, Craig. Kind of looked the same. He'd like long dark hair. <laughs> but the past life one was buffer. No offense, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like six nine and Yeah, he was he was carried guy. horses on his back mm -hmm. and no yeah. kidding. <laughs> and he never wore a shirt, which was cool. <laughs> Just the times I saw him when he was young, he wasn't wearing a shirt. It was fine. Um, but yeah, and then and then she kind of turns to your subconscious and asks you questions and mm -hmm. like, why did you see this life and things like that. And I think I saw that life because I experienced a lot of loss in that life, much like this life. And I had some, um, you know, obviously like we're, we're doing this, we're using our voice and um, mm -hmm. I've, um, you know, my social media and my business, it's like using my voice to like advise others and the confidence and like um, value in yourself you have to feel around that and I went through that in that lifetime so I think it was just showing me like look at you like you did it in this life easy peasy you've already done it before um, so that was cool and yeah that was that was my experience it was really magical and it the strangest thing is that you're seeing all this new information but it's not new it's like it's, all, <laughs> it's like you always knew it or something yeah like, now I just feel so matter-of-factly about that life. I'm like, one time when I was <laughs> in a, you know, a Mayan little village. When I was that, obviously. That was obviously. <laughs> so, yeah. That I was, love that. That was my, my life. It was super special. Yeah. My experience was also special, but very different. Mm -hmm. I dipped into the hypnosis and I'm on the cloud mm -hmm. and the cloud is taking me to the past life and okay you know look down what are you wearing what are you holding and I was praying I was like please like I want to be a, a queen or a princess <laughs> or like somebody who explored new lands I mean yeah. I was really th a president just something big and I was um a maid <laughs> and I was holding a bucket of water and I was describing it as very um if you if you google Victorian scullery maid uh -huh. that's exactly what it was and it's like draw there's not many photos but there's you know, <laughs> there's not many photos <laughs> there's drawings of you know a woman breaking her back to clean the the, the steps and yeah the, so that's who I was and <laughs> and um my backstory was that I was from like a kind of poor family mm -hmm. and I had a husband who was so uninteresting like he <laughs> nothing to write home about and nothing to write home about <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, quite literally, I was not shown a vision of, wow, the man I married. So I, th- I think there was a story of like, you marry this man and you'll you'll be taken care of and mm-hmm. go with him, child. And, mm-hmm. and I did. And that is not what happened. Instead, he was also not that rich. And I had to work as a maid. Mm. And I would walk to work and I would clean the fireplace and I would do all these things. You're like a little Cinderella. Yes. And I always wanted to have a baby and it just didn't happen or it couldn't happen. Mm. Um, And then the person who worked in the house, which I can so clearly picture the layout. And Mm -hmm. that's what's so wild about hypnosis. You see every detail. Yeah. Was so kind to me. She would always like her husband was neutral, but she would always she sort of had a friendship with me when no one Mm -hmm. was around and she would sort of give me, I don't know, little she would sneak me little gifts and Mm -hmm. she was really sweet. And then my husband died because he was older than me and it was the 1800s. So if you don't live past, you know, 29 (laughs) and you were probably like 12. (laughs) Yes. I feel like I was maybe 16, 17. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so he died and then I became a school teacher and I really enjoyed Mm. that. And then I died and, uh, I didn't meet up with my orbs. I was just like later. (laughs) And then, um, Tiffany asked me, she said, well, or what was the question I'm thinking? She goes, do you think you know that husband is somebody that you've met in this life? And <laughs> clear as day in my hypnosis, I said, absolutely not. <laughs> I said, I have no idea who that man was. Yeah. The one that felt familiar was the one who like gave me things. Yeah. Do you know who that was? I think it might be this of the many, many, many nanny jobs I've had working in people's ho- in this mm-hmm. lifetime working in people's houses yeah. cleaning people's kitchens taking care of their kids you know sorting out their bills and affairs whatever i've done a lot of domestic work in my tw- in yeah. my teens and 20s and there was there is one um mom that i still occasionally babysit for and she was always like that maybe her then she feels very familiar in that way but yeah um sadie got to be a, a mayan princess kind of honestly yeah kind of. and i was a maid and i think my lesson was something that i that i kind of came to maybe a couple years ago and especially this year which was um i'm allowed because i've been um like a maid in many forms in this life yeah. and i've been a teacher mm-hmm. and But those two things weren't my ultimate desire. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed them very much, but they weren't my ultimate desire. And my ultimate desire is to do music and to sort of create community and and inspiration and magic and lead just by like being myself. Yeah. And I feel like this is the lifetime where I'm finally going to give myself permission to do that. Yeah. So that was sort of my insight. But yeah, when I looked down and I was holding a big old heavy bucket full of dirty water, I was like, oh, God. Oh, my gosh. You know. I really, I want to do it again and see more different lives. I know. And then how did, how was your experience? So you leave it, so, okay. In, in cute, in Q-H-A-T-G. It's such a cute practice. You leave the past life and then, is the past life first or is the subconscious? I think the subconscious I did past is, life and then subconscious okay. chat, yeah. So then you chat with your subconscious, which may have a very different personality than you. Mm-hmm. So did you have a difference there? And what was that um, like? I Very matter of fact. Mm-hmm. Like some of the questions I asked, it was like, you, come on, you know the answer to that. It was like almost annoyed mm. because it was annoyed by my insecurities almost. Okay. It was like, that's no big deal. No, stop worrying about that. <laughs> it was just very like, come on, like, let's get over this already. <laughs> and before you walk into the session, you bring a list of questions Yeah. that you want to ask your inner self. Like, am I on the right path mm-hmm. or just anything, anything that you yeah. want to ask. Yeah, I don't even... I have it all in my notebook. Um, yeah, I asked, like, am I on the right path? And it was like, yeah, you know, keep doing what you're doing. I, and I had some suggestion on, like, how to, like, get out there more and trust in myself. But, yeah, it was funny with some of the things where I was, like, um, more specific, like, about, like, some sort of, 
lack of confidence around something specific and it was just like get over it already (laughs) (laughs) and that was and that's funny because that's kind of how if i ask a specific question in a meditation and it's something that i keep i'm like i keep thinking about and keep asking about and it'll be like we already told you the answer you're done with this now (laughs) In my meditations too it'll be kind of this it's so that's what you're doing when you're meditating you're tapping into yourself but it's just funny matter of fact i would say mine was like a very um so i'm jewish and i come from you know a, a, a long line of, of jewish women and and i don't necessarily um lead with that energy mm-hmm. but my subconscious is extremely <laughs> extremely jewish like i was I, I, I'm tempted to like pull up the recording and it was just I asked something about like you know how, uh, something about my relationship like mm-hmm. something you know oh like what do you what do I think about a life with Victor or whatever and the subconscious that came in goes oh my god he's fabulous he's fab I don't use that word <laughs> It was like Jewish grandmother <gasps> circa 1956. I mean, it was very um, f- funny to listen back to. Oh, my God. I want to hypnotize you on the podcast and just have an interview with Jewish grandmother Juliet. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll play that. Maybe that'll be some some if we make a Patreon someday or yeah, something, we can share bonus. some of the some of our <laughs> hypnosis audios because yes. we have like all yeah, of them. We do have them. But yeah, it was very or one of my questions was, you know, why do I have this psychic ability? Why do I have this medium ability? Like mm-hmm. why why did why and so Tiffany goes, Why does Juliet have this ability? And the response was, Because she wanted it. Why is she asked? I mean, it was such a funny That's what mine was like, why are you asking that yeah. sometimes? And I was like, I was wondering, God <laughs> I was like, geez, I was just asking. Yeah. <laughs> Man, you're so mean to me. Like, yeah, you're yeah the very like sort of matter of fact straight to the point yeah no messing around <laughs> yes and i th- i maybe half thought that there would be like a like a voice like this that yeah. had you know sweet things to say yeah. and it was very much the mm-hmm. opposite so if i think what's fun about all this deep diving that we do mm-hmm. is you really never know what to expect yeah that's true yeah and you uncover so many layers of yourself that you didn't even realize were there and i wanted to ask you what is the next thing you want to do or try Mm. hmm i don't know i haven't really thought about that because i i feel like i'm ready for the next thing um i don't want to smoke or ingest anything but i would love to do some type of well hypnosis another type of hypnosis or another type of breath work or certain type of i've never been like actually one time i was reiki'd and the craziest thing happened i actually haven't been reiki my mom was a qigong healer which is a similar you qigonged me once i qigonged you once using it as a verb (laughs) (laughs) i'm I'm sorry i'm not trying to i did i do it on craig a lot i'm not like a certified healer so i don't do it for people or actually technically when i was eight i got certified level one and two hello so mm -hmm, i don't know if they'll still count that if i have to keep up with things if i can go back in at level three or whatever i do i was gonna say more so than like seeking the experiences it's things that i really want to get like um, I want to take like classes to get like certified in. Ooh. Like I'm really interested in Qigong, which I've shared that with you before. Um, and I'm not necessarily interested in like the hypnosis stuff, like being able to do that to somebody. But me neither. I like I really enjoy energy healing stuff, working with energy, because um, I feel like I can, like when I practice on Craig, I can um, sense on his body. Be like, don't tell me anything that hurts. Um, just let me figure it out and I can like sense where mm. stuff is. Like I'll get a little shiver when my hand passes over that spot. So I'm interested in that. Um, yeah. What about you? I think so. My one 30 second experience with Reiki. Yeah. Which my, um, my friend's boyfriend made a, a very funny joke about Reiki and we all have a sense of humor. So, so yes. he, <laughs> He's, you know what? He reminds me of the male version of my subconscious because he's a very blunt Jewish guy. I love that. <laughs> and so I think 
I don't know if I brought it up or she, it, it came up a conversation and he goes, oh, you mean I pay you and you do nothing? I was like, no, that's not what it is. <laughs> like if you decide it's nothing, that's what's going to happen. And so, and I maybe would have thought that for a while, but then I had this experience. <laughs> yeah. And so, so even if you aren't in the mindset that you accept it, a lot of times you still, you still reap the benefits. Yeah. It'll help more if you're very accepting of it, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So I was, again, everything ties back to the the old work environment that Mm -hmm. we had. There is a manager that was brought in that's very brilliant and kind and wonderful. And she is a Reiki master. Mm. And I would see her doing work on people. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. And I had this one woman who kept showing back up at the store. And I felt like she was only coming to see me there was just something kind of odd i mean she was coming every single day oh wow and i could smell her before she would show up i like smelled Mm. her and i was like she smells like baby powder and um other people thought she did not smell like that at all so that was like a weird like mother child association yeah like a caregiver association and so this woman who does reiki after that other woman who was not leaving finally left she said oh i think there's like um there's like an energetic hook in you or yeah. there's like a connection here and so she's like can i can i remove Clear it and yeah. i said okay sure um and she did whatever she did which took maybe 30 seconds uh-huh. um the next day i slept for like 20 straight hours oh i remember when you told me this you're like i don't know if that's good or bad and i was like obviously you were healing yourself and you then after yourself. that, which has never happened to me in my life, I completely passed out, like mm. fell, passed out, fell over, hit a desk, like totally bruised a rib. And then after that, that woman never came back to the store. Wow. She had like a deep hook in you or something. Truly. And I don't wow. know what, I don't know what, but so that is something that still definitely intrigues me. And yeah. I kind of want to either have done on me or like learn more how to do want, we, we could do a reiki course together that would oh my be god fun. yes more so parallel online now and then we could practice on each other oh my god i would love yeah. to do that yeah maybe we could do that oh my god I a also, christmas present to us yes <laughs> for each other a hanukkah other. slash christmas yeah. present to us i celebrate both holidays they're both yeah. fun yeah i think it's common um because like i used to date someone that their family was muslim but like they didn't really have like a christmas celebration but they still they were like we don't celebrate christmas but we have a nice dinner that day like it's like it's just kind of um part of like the culture oh yeah we do the tree we do the stockings yeah santa always came growing up yeah it's just fun because it's not really christmas isn't for most people or maybe not most but a lot of people it's not associated with the religion it's just like a fun giving tradition and all that yeah Oh, but okay. So, um, I am. I'm not ready for this anytime soon. I know what I'm you're gonna super say. Intrigued by Iowa. I knew you were gonna say that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm scared of it. Um, well, I did, I did have the experience where I accidentally ate mushrooms. <laughs> that I told you about. Sadie just accidentally ate. Okay, so, <laughs> so, I was. I was experiencing a lot of anxiety and my boyfriend was like, you should try microdosing mushrooms. And I was like, I don't know. Like, I'm, you know me, I'm not, I don't smoke weed. I don't like take drugs. Like, I'm not like, this is not me, but I'm like, yeah. I'm like, okay. Like I, I've heard a lot of people, oh, good, good things, people helping their migraines and anxiety and stuff and you don't get high and whatever. So I'm like, okay, I'm open to trying this. And um, so I took it a little, a t- I ate a tiny bit one day and I didn't really like notice a difference, but I was like, okay. And you're supposed to do it like every two to three days and kind of get it in your system. So the second time I was going to take some, he was like, I'm going to give you a little bit more than last time. Cause I think I gave you too little. And I was like, and I was like, okay. Yeah. Cause I felt absolutely nothing. So I was like, I trust that. <laughs> and then, so he gave it to me and I ate it and then he left. And then about 30 minutes later, <laughs> I was, I had made myself dinner and I was sitting, so, and when I, when I cook a lot of times, I'll have a little bit of wine. And so I had like maybe four sips of wine and I was like, am I wasted right now? Like, did I just drink a bunch of wine? And I, did? <laughs> but it wasn't like being drunk, but then I was like, oh my God, that mushroom I ate. <laughs> 
<laughs> and um, so I called him, and I'm like dying laughing, and my face hurts. I can't stop smiling. And it, it was still a very little amount. Like I, I felt high for like 20 minutes, and then it was gone. And I was just like giggling and giggling and giggling, and everything felt so fun. <laughs> and it was so funny like i was closing it was it was getting dark so i was closing all the blinds and i was like ah, 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 crack it up closing the blinds i was like wow it's incredible they invented these things like the like because they were the, they're the ones without like a string they're like the straight across blinds that just like hold themselves so, how do how they do that it. seriously and then imagine <laughs> having a little bit too much mushroom in your system and you're pulling them down you're like wow that's a party <laughs> that's a party for one but um i never you know so i'm kind since that was like really fun and it was just a little bit too much and i was only a little bit high i am kind of interested in like actually taking more because that was a good experience and having like um and just like meditating you know Mm-hmm. and seeing what that would be like but that was just i called him dying laughing he was like oh my god i'm so sorry and i was like it's fine i just don't what are you supposed to do when you feel like this <laughs> i don't know i feel like if you like smoke weed i don't know you watch a movie and i was like what do people do when they eat mushrooms so what did you end up doing i wrapped up my cat in a blanket <laughs> and i went outside and i looked for aliens <laughs> and it was a good night everyone had a good night and it was a good night and you know what i did feel really reset and recharged after that experience because like laughing so much mm-hmm. and just like getting the joy flowing in my body and um yeah so that was my teeny tiny experience with that but since that was a good experience it makes me a little more open to like trying other things but i definitely have a curio a curiosity not the desire yet but a yeah. curiosity about ayahuasca yeah just because people come back and they're like completely transformed yeah but apparently if you are on certain medications you oh. cannot <laughs> you cannot yeah. take it they will not let you you um, have to like so right now i am not a candidate for yeah. ayahuasca but maybe someday i also didn't realize that it's it's a literal purge out both ends. It's not fun yeah. all the time. Yeah, but I guess what you happens in between and is shit and yeah, and sometimes scary things do happen. You see like bad or sad or traumatic stuff, so you experience and get rid of it. Well, can't you also be in the room and not drink the stuff? Yeah. Okay. Be if you ever want to go, it, I can go with, with you, and I they probably won't let me drink it because they don't want yeah. a um class action lawsuit but yeah i will sit with you yeah because i've heard um yeah people being in the energy of it and still having experiences because you know mother ayahuasca comes into the room and whatever i want to meet mother and i ayahuasca. feel like you could tap into it easily enough just i think so i know i'd be like can i take a half dosage i'm very sensitive they're like five for you <laughs> yeah but I'm interested in, but um, yeah, I'm not quite ready for that. That room probably smells. Oh, yeah. That just occurred to me. Yeah. That's probably... Oh, oh yeah. May- maybe they burn some incense or something. Probably. I don't know. Yeah, I have I find it really interesting to listen to different people's like stories and experiences. I do, too. I'm like, wow, I want all of that, but I'm scared. <laughs> But I think it's a part of your spiritual journey. At some point, you yes. become ready for that. And I am not at that point yet. I'm like here and ayahuasca is like here. I know, maybe that's like a like a 35th birthday yeah, kind yeah. of thing. <laughs> Give me six more years. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. It'll be, yeah, it'll be. We'll do it as a celebration of something. Maybe our our five-year podcast anniversary oh we'll my go gosh ayahuasca or something oh <laughs> we'll just be like we're gonna record all of this don't mind us <laughs> they're like okay they're like no 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 um but yeah i'm interested in that i think right now though i'm kind of seeking out things that i can like learn to like do for other people or well let's look that. into reiki yeah because that would be, be a fun. cool because even now with with the with the pandemic mm-hmm. it's um, not online you can do it you can learn it online and you can do distance reiki you yeah can help people from a distance which is so cool yeah i mean yeah if we can read people from a distance why can't we heal people from a distance totally yeah totally, totally. And my mom yeah my mom did that with qigong too she would heal like her family or friends in different you know yeah. locations everywhere so it's very possible and conducive to the world we live in now (laughs) totally i'm just so excited i feel like it was very fun today to reminisce on 
breathwork night. Oh and my god, I want to do that again so bad. I know. I bet if we were here and we locked the door and we blasted music, mm-hmm. we could do it. Yeah. We should do it during the day when my neighbors are home. Yes. During the week day. Well, yeah, we, we, we could do it one day. We should do it and then record one when we're all like high on it afterwards. Okay. That would be funny to be like, we just did breath work. <laughs> I remember feeling so like, oh, like I was like, uh, I was like, Craig, can you drive? Because like, I feel like I'm drunk right now. Yeah, like, I felt loopy for We had to get grounded. We were like jumping up and down, like trying to kind of like, you know, get back to earth. It was cool. Between that and and reminiscing on our past lives. Our as past a, lives. A princess. <laughs> and a maid. And a maid. Uh, I'm curious if any of you out there, the listeners, have had your own um, breathwork and or past life experiences. We want to hear about them. Mm-hmm. Um, email us. Oh my gosh, stories. please. We could share them if we find some. They're, I'm sure they're all amazing stories, but we'll share maybe share some of our favorites. Um, goddesshangs at gmail.com. I made it. It's a real Yeah, we have up. a real email. Um, subscribe to our YouTube. Subscribe, subscribe to share our podcast. With a friend that you think would like it. And I'm Juliet. I'm Sadie. Obviously. Obviously. <laughs> we'll see you next week, guys. Bye, guys.